Um, and there is an aspect of people in the town that, that don't want these Night of the Living Dead hoodlums up here, um, you know, messing with their cemetery. And I've been trying since 19, what, or, or since 2008 to educate these people that these are not hoodlums, these are all wonderful, dear, sweet people that were willing to put their money up. They're slowly, slowly, slowly coming you know, to realize that we're not just doing this for Evan Perry, we're not just doing this for Night of the Living Dead. Night of the Living Dead, they paid for it, they're a big part of it, but it's really being done for the town. And, um, and, and, and we, Mark and I have seen it over the last couple days when we started taking the, the covers off the windows and, and putting new windows in and doing the final sort of things and getting the front of it painted finally. People will now come through the cemetery and go a little bit slower and they'll stop and they'll, you know, they'll give you a thumbs up or they'll, you know, actually, I've been asked a hundred times, are they going to use this again? Um, and the answer is hopefully yes. Um, they want to use it for memorial services again. Um, there's never been a real solid answer as to why they never used it in the first place. To the best of everybody's knowledge, um, there was one memorial service that ever happened in there. There's a question that there might have been two. Uh, but that's it. They built this building and then they, and then they used it to, to store their tractors in, their lawn tractors. We just don't know the reason why. Um, part of it was because tents became very vogue uh, and they put tents up at the gravesite, right at the gravesite, so they didn't have to, you know, mess around with that. And uh, and it's not in the most logical place in the cemetery, but then the other side of it, it is, because this is land they couldn't put graves on. So, you know, this little hillside. But I mean, come on, look at how many people we have here, and they all seem to you know, park perfectly fine, you know, that we have probably twice what any memorial service would have, you know. So that now the thing is, is that back then you could get a tent put up for 50 bucks. Now they're $450, $500, you know, for one service. So they're, the, uh, the, the thinking is and the idea is that, uh, you know, people will be happy to come back into it. And, that, and now it's beautiful, you know. Well, one of the things that uh, we, in any media interviews or anything that, that I've ever been a part of here is that we always remind people, please remember that you're in a, in cemetery. a, in a cemetery and this well, is a very sensitive and a dedicated spot for a whole lot of families. Right. And, I'm sorry? Consecrated ground. Yes, yes. But, you know, the other thing is, um, you know, back in the old days, um, cemeteries were built around churches. So the church would have weddings in it. And, and my feeling is, what's wrong with that? Uh, what's wrong with it? I originally thought, um, hey, cool, we'll have zombie weddings in it. I don't yeah. think that way anymore. We'll I really, have, truly do not. We'll have your wedding in there, Dare. <laughs> First, got to find me a woman. Oh, hey, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's it just over time when you think about things, you know, a wedding is a dignified, you know, affair. Um, trying to, doing a zombie wedding is never going to have the sincerity that a, a, a real wedding is going to have. Um, and, and, and I think it will be a long, long Shenanigan. time. What's that? Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Terry <We> Green. <laughs> well, you know what? And, and, and you know what, Derek? That, that is, that, that's to be determined over time. You know? Uh, but I bet you didn't. I bet you didn't get have a zombie. I bet you didn't have a zombie wedding in a cemetery. <laughs> all right, it's all starting to fall apart now. <laughs> uh, but but anyway, I, I I think the most important thing is, and I think the most important thing that 
you know, Mark had in mind, and what I had in mind, and I, and I hope what you all had in mind when you donated your money, was to save the building. Okay, I, I look at this thing, it, it happened in stages. First of all, this thing was a nanosecond from being torn down. I swear to you, if someone had a backhoe on a trailer and a day off, this thing would be dust right now. So that's number one. You know, we got into the meeting and we said, let us do it. Let us raise the money. And they agreed to that. The second thing was, or second phase was, is that we fixed it. And, and you're all here to witness. No, we're not done. And we're sorry that we don't have it absolutely completed for you. But that's just a matter of life. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's phase two. Now phase three is going to be exactly that. You know, I, I was up here the other night. I come up here all the time. Uh, you know, two o'clock in the morning, I'll just come up here and sit in my truck and just look at it. I, I just love it. And um, I was sitting. I was. I actually had the door open uh, about two o'clock in the morning last week. And I thought, how cool would it be to have yoga classes in here? You know, I mean, it's such a peaceful, calm wonderful place I, I, I mean or, or have a kids puppet show in here you know use it as a community center of sorts um, that that's a thought that I have now uh, by the way also uh, what what really supports this cemetery financially is that cell phone tower back there um, that's what pays for them to do the, the general maintenance on the cemetery so let's expand that a little bit. You know, let, I'm trying to, you know, open it up to something that that suits everybody's, you know, needs and and is it, it has the dignity that this building should have. Boy, there's the quiet. <laughs> so who doesn't agree with me? <laughs> that I head nuts. <laughs> I know I asked personally. Mark, but is there is there a tentative when completion date? Yeah, should it be done by the end of the year or? Uh, we, we're we're thinking winter, and again, it depends. We got a whole the basement that it, it, you know that's got to be dealt with. You know, is that going to be done by winter? Probably not. Is that going to be done in this whole restoration? Who knows? Uh, know? I'm I'm talking about like where we could see like. The main part of it. Oh, you know. definitely. Like well, column number four. four. Yeah, like four I mean, and the it. rest column of the windows in. Column number and four like and it. some trim around the windows is, is yeah. if that block was in and, and we have the trim, that'll be done next week. Oh. Right, Mark? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that'll be done next week. This will be done at the end of the, you know, the fourth column will be done at the end of the. the, and the are, are you still doing a pot belly in, in the. Yeah. I'd like to. You know, why not? Even if it doesn't operate, it, it just would be sweet to have it back the way it was. We do, we've done everything to, to bring it back to, to what we've been able to picture and what we've been able to see. Um, you know, we, when we tore all the plaster, thanks to Justin Streiner and Terry Callum, uh, who came, and, and, excuse me, Mark Gerson, who, who did what the two of them did. <laughs> <laughs> himself. It was a lot of work. It's a lot of plaster to come down in there. But um, um, you know, the the chimney got exposed, and someone said, "Wow, wouldn't it be cool if we just left the chimney on? You know, left it exposed and didn't cover it back up?" And you and and it's always been, you know, my mission and my goal is to think of think of it as how the builders would have done it. You know, and the builders didn't do it, and that was obvious. I don't want to do it. I don't want to make any permanent changes to this building um, that that will, will, would have not been in the original design, and we haven't. Um, I'd say nothing that I that I can think of. Yes, we put vinyl clad windows in it. Oh, they're aluminum clad windows. Learn something every day. That's why he's the contractor. <laughs> That's on the blue book. Uh, remember that thing I was talking about, the, the bonding and the communications? I didn't even know they were aluminum windows. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, th that's, that's done because 
Um, it would have been extraordinarily expensive to rebuild uh, wooden sashes um, that just would fall apart over time again. You know, that's just the nature of them. Uh, they, these are never going to fall apart. They never need painted. And yet, in the inside, they'll be stained the same as all the other casings around the windows. And for all intents and purposes, you never know the difference. And my fat mouth will shut up after this. <laughs> no, that's why you're here. What about graffiti bat? <laughs> graffiti bat's still back there. Uh, no, I mean, what's going to go on with him? I don't know. <laughs> we have to think, of, think about that. First of all, we got to get it off the window, which might be a real chore, because they got it in there with like 16 penny nails. But uh, we'll get it off. I'd, I'd like to... Don't doubt, Mark. <laughs> so, any, anybody else got a question? Gary? Yes. Right, you had a about 20 years before this started. <laughs> no, I, I have to tell you, that's been the most wonderful thing about it. Um, what, I, what I do give the Cemetery Association credit for, they let us go. They weren't up here saying, well, why are you doing this this way, or why are you doing this that way? They, they have, they have literally just let us do what, what we want to do. Um, and, and so I can only take that as a, uh, a vote of confidence that they, they think and they know what we're doing is right. Um, I mean, you know, Mark knows this. He, he knows other contractors. He knows other situations. We could have put, done a patch job on this, you know, for probably half of what we have into it or even less. But what would you have in another 10 years? You know, you'd, you'd be right back to the same situation again. So, and, and uh, you know, I know that everybody, when I started the fundraiser, I know that everybody <laughs> wanted to do it as volunteers, you know. And I had so many people say, hey, I'm a, you know, I'm a carpenter out here in, a, in Arkansas, and I'll come in and spend as much time as you need me to spend there. Well, can you imagine trying to organize you know, people, you know, it just wouldn't have worked, and as dear and as sweet and wonderful as those uh, those offers were, it just it, it just wouldn't have worked. And um, so, I always felt that from the very beginning. My point is that's why we're raising the money. You know, we're raising the money, and also, you know, how do I know if this guy from Ohio that comes in that's that, that's a roofer is any good? How do I know he's not going to do more damage than than he does good? So, I think that was a uh, I'll pat myself on the back for, for figuring to do it that way. Um, and, and, and accountability, you know, I mean, Mark is a registered builder, you know, he, uh, it's, it's not like, oh, gee, I didn't know that, you know. <laughs> so, anyway, that's that. What else? If the founding fathers question you again, don't feel the need to be defensive. You did a hell of a job. That's right. Well, thank you. Right. And in the end, that's all that matters, you know? It's in the end, you know, nobody can say we scammed them out of their money. Nope. No one can say that, you know, uh, uh, whatever. You know, we, we, we did it with our hearts. Uh, to be very honest, and uh, and and I think that's that's what shows. It, we're, uh, now, what did you expect when you all came here? I guess most of you have seen it on Facebook because I've only posted about a thousand pictures. Of me. <laughs> but, so I guess it wasn't a big surprise. But uh, but somehow when you're actually on the ground, it, you know it ha it has a bit of a different dynamic. But. Yeah, windows, win exactly. We didn't show you the windows. We wanted the windows to be a surprise for when you got here. And once again, my contractor didn't tell me they were in. <laughs> All of a sudden, I look at the back of his truck and, Mark, what's that? <laughs> oh, I didn't tell you about them. They came in last Thursday. <laughs> so, surprise, 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 surprise. Um, Gary, yes. do, do you have any plan right now for tonight's ceremony? 
uh, since there are so many people from the cast together yes. to have a photograph taken. Oh, you right. better believe it. Okay. You better believe it. All right. I don't know if we do it right this second, but yes. And, and uh, you know, I would really like when that happens, we get you all up here, and then I want everybody else up here. You know, and Sarah can Sarah and Joel and whoever else is here can, you know, take pictures because I think that would be a very cool picture. Good. Yeah. Got to figure out how to get Joel in it. <laughs> well, let Sarah take it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. It's not like we don't have a photographer or two around here. Um, where's Jim? Hey, Jim. I don't know what, uh, I don't actually know. We don't want, we don't want to cut into any bonfire time. <laughs> um, I, I had actually a, a, a cheat sheet uh, written by Jim. Um, and once again, Jim Serenella, who, who also is due a round of applause for bringing all these guests to the event. Uh, Jim has has probably found more Night of the Living Dead guests. And where's where's uh, where's John Hirsch? Where are you? Way over there. John introduced himself. Well, he didn't even have the courage to do it himself. He had his son do it. <laughs> we we were we had a, a fundraiser for the Hollywood Theater. And, uh, and John came to it, and uh, it, that wasn't your son? Oh, you're okay, an old friend of his. And he said, you know, my friend was in Night of the Living Dead, and we hear it all the time. Russ and I looked at one another, kind of rolled our eyes, and said, okay, here's another one. And then he started, come on up. And he started to, uh, you know, the friend started to describe the scene, and, we're, and, and Russ is saying, no, no, that was Jack Gibbons. And he says, no, I was the young guy behind Jack Gibbons. This is the youngest member of, of, of Night of the Living Dead, right here. Eleven she was. All right, he's the second, second guy. <laughs> he's the youngest man. You guys, just do me a favor and tell these people a little bit about what this whole experience has meant to you. Well, I'll tell you, I grew up in a neighborhood where everybody's father was a cop or a fireman or a steel worker. And uh, I was really interested in movies. When the school would go on a field trip and I'd pick up a book about movies, the math teacher would catch me with it and hit me on the head with it. <laughs> you know, that's nothing to be interested in. Uh, my sister lived on the same street in Gibsonia as did Jack Gibbons. And she knew I was really interested in movies, especially horror movies, and everybody knew this film was being made. Uh, sorry. Uh, so anyway, he gave me, through her, permission to call him. And I, I called him at Hartman Associates, where he was uh, a chief sound engineer. He invited me down, he let me watch him cut a demo for a soul group. I was so impressed. I, I hadn't uh, met anyone like that before, and I was interested, you know, in what and what he was up to. So he says, well, call me on the phone every day. And uh, because, you see, it was late in the season, and the film was mostly in the can, and they wanted to pick up some shots, and uh, it had to be determined which shots were needed. So I called him up every day, and he'd go on the phone and say, no. And I'd call him the next day, and he'd say, no. And you don't want to hear no too much when you're 15. And sometimes I'd say to him, uh, hey, am I bothering you? I don't want to be bothering you. He said, no, call me every day. So I'd call him every day. Sometimes the secretary would say, he's in a meeting. I call him every day. And one day he said, yes. So I went down to Smithfield Street and uh, he took me out to the farmhouse and uh, it was a, a wonderful thing because I was surrounded by a bunch of adults who weren't necessarily like cops or steel workers. They, <laughs> they were clever people. They were making their own wits. There were a lot of jokes and witticism and laughter. And uh, lots of times people aren't happy to have a, a kid hanging around. And um, they were all extremely sweet to me. They answered all my questions. They treated me like an equal. And uh, they saw, I, saw, I saw Jack Russo set on fire. I, I was there when it happened. Um, you throwing 
matches into a puddle of gasoline, wasn't it? Well, it's so hard. <laughs> yeah. My mother didn't know I was hanging out with guys in their 20s throwing matches in the puddles of gasoline. <laughs> but uh, there I was. It was very exciting and, and, and thrilling for me. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I went to film school. I became an editor. I've been an editor for uh, 40 years. I cut some negative for, uh, for Jack Russo. The one